Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have not done a giveaway in quite some time, I think, so I figured it was about time that I did one. And I really wanted to have this giveaway to my loyal subscribers because you guys are just amazing. You, you guys have supported me like crazy and I just want to give back to you guys because I appreciate it. Like, you have no idea and I just love you guys so much. So, I have a few things in here for you guys. I'm not even going to go through it on camera. I'm just going to insert a picture right over here of all of the products that will be included in the giveaway. So in the description box down below, there's going to be a link. You're gonna click that link. It's gonna bring you to another page. You basically just have to complete the steps that are on the page. And then on the 15th, so next Monday, this giveaway is going to only last a week. I will be contacting the winner and also the name of the winner will be in the description box down below. So, I think that's pretty much it. Now let's get into the products that I regret buying. Quick disclaimer before I start, I just want to say that I'm not trashing any of these brands. The products that I'm going to mention today are just products that didn't personally work for me. They could be your favorite product, which is totally cool, and based off of my experiences, I do regret buying them. But a lot of these brands do have other products that I absolutely adore, so it does not say anything about the brand itself. That's pretty much it. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first product that I regret buying is this lipstick from Kat Von D. This is in the color homegirl now when I bought this lipstick I was so excited because it is the most gorgeous super dark vampy purple color this is the patchiest and driest lipstick that I've ever used when you apply it on your lips it like pulls at your lips and it's just so uncomfortable it's almost impossible to apply it smoothly which is what I really don't like about this color and because it is so dark these types of colors need to apply well because they could get messy really easily. I've tried to make this work so many times, but I just cannot do it. Like, look at that swatched on my hand. Do you see how it just jumps and there's not a, like a smooth, opaque coverage? But I do know that the other Kat Von D lipsticks are great. Just this color in particular, not my favorite. Okay, so I have a mascara over here that I definitely regret buying. This is the Benefit Bad Gal Lash. Now, I actually really like the way that the mascara made my lashes look. The wear of this did not work for me at all. I don't know if my eyes are like exceptionally watery or what, but I literally came home one day after wearing this, and I'm not joking, guys, I had mascara like from here to here. Like, just black. It was such a mess, and I was so embarrassed because I was talking to people, and I didn't even realize that I had mascara all over my face, and it was because of this product. It traumatized me a little bit, so I have not worn it since because I'm so scared that the same thing will happen again. Um, I do know that they do have a waterproof version of this, so I'm sure that fixes that problem, but I'm just not into it. I find that the wand is just way too big. Like, it's so big that it just gets all over my lids. Like, look how crazy huge that is. It's ginormous. Do not even attempt to put this on your lower lashes. You will get mascara everywhere. So it's really just not my favorite, and I definitely regret buying this. Okay, I have another mascara that I want to talk about. This is the Dior Dior Show Mascara. I've heard so many good things about this mascara. I've heard people rave about this, say it's the best mascara ever. So I bought it on a whim, and I thought that I would love it. It didn't do anything for my lashes. I also sort of had the same problem that I did with the Benefit Bad Gal Lash. It did smear a lot on me. I really think I need to go for the more waterproof mascaras because I feel like my eyes are just super watery, but it actually has a very similar wand to the Bad Gal Lash, so you obviously can tell that I just do not like these types of wands. It's really, really big. It gets everywhere when you apply it, and it just does not make my lashes look good at all. I remember it made them look just clumpy. It didn't give them a lot of length. It didn't give them a lot of volume. I'm just not into it. It also has a very strong scent to it. Like, holy shit. It's like they poured a bottle of perfume in here. It smells like so flowery. I probably should throw this out because it's pretty old as well. And I don't think this is really worth the money. Okay, I have another lip product over here. This is the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Roman Holiday. Now, I have heard amazing things about the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil, specifically about the darker shade. My friend Mariah, the gal's guide here on YouTube, she absolutely adores the dark red one. I forget the name, but she says that it's absolutely amazing. And I believe her because I swatched it and it does look really nice and opaque and apparently they last forever. So I went to go pick one up. I actually bought this specifically for eye mats because I wanted a really long wearing matte. This is such a terrible lip pencil. My first problem with this is that it's not opaque. You really, really, really have to build this up in order to get um, a complete coverage on the lips. Like look how much I have to build that up just to get like a opaque coverage. Oh my god, it's so bad. Like I want you guys to take a look at it close up. That's just on my hand, and you could see how 
um, spotty it is and it's just not completely opaque. Like this feels way more like a satin than it does a matte and their matte lip pencils just go on super opaque with one swipe but this one just does not work for me. And it applies exactly like how I applied on my hand on my lips. So super patchy, super flaky. Really regret buying this because it was so expensive and I'm super sad about it because I had such high hopes. But it is what it is. The next product that I regret buying is MAC Lightscapade. Now you guys know I like my really intense highlighters, um, but this highlighter in particular is just not intense enough for me and I hardly ever use it. I think this highlighter in particular is really good if you're extremely, extremely fair and you can't really find a highlighter that's light enough for you. I think you would probably really like it because it is a very, very, very light vanilla shade. But just for me, I like my highlighters to be really intense, like you see that glow, and this just does not give it to me. It's just that, the product isn't bad, it's just for my personal preferences, I wish it was just a little bit more intense. Like it gives a pretty glow, it definitely gives a pretty glow, but you could hardly even see it. Like hardly. So that is why I do regret buying this product, but like I said, if you are very fair, you probably would actually really like this. Okay, so now I actually have two MAC lipsticks that I literally bought two days ago that I already regret buying, which is so sad. Okay, so MAC just came out with a ton of new matte lipsticks and two of their colors that they came out with was Whirl and Stone. I got so excited when I walked into the store. I was like, do you have Whirl and Stone matte lipstick? And she was like, yes, we do. And I was like, oh my god, yeah. I was like so excited. I was like, give me one of each. So I bought it. I didn't even swatch it on my hand like an idiot. I never not swatch a lip product before I buy it, but for these I just didn't because I'm like, they're gonna be so nice, I'm so excited, the lip liners are so pretty, so I, can, I can't wait to have a matching lipstick. I got home, I swatched it, and I was like, are you kidding me? Now Whirl, the lip liner, is more of like a pinky, mauve browny color, but the lipstick is literally pure brown. I put this on, I was like, why does it look like I just ate chocolate pudding? Like, look at that. I'm like so disappointed with myself right now. Now Stone is actually a pretty cool color and I feel like I could probably make a really cool look with this but I would definitely be wearing this maybe twice. These literally look like poop stains on my hands. Ew! So that is Stone and that is Whirl. Just these colors just do not work for me whatsoever and I'm just pissed at myself that I bought these without swatching so this is like a totally my fault because I obviously should have been a responsible shopper and I should have swatched these before buying them. The first one is a Bite one which kills me because I love Bite. I just love their lip products so much and I had such high expectations for the lip liners especially since they were such a cool shape. Um, so this is in the color Nutmeg and the color is beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's this gorgeous like pinky mauve color. It is so pretty just to apply over the lips and it's actually a very cool shape. It's almost like a flattened lip liner so it just makes it really easy to apply it but the problem with this lip liner is because it is flat it breaks so easily. Like you could just start applying this and it'll just like crack off and it's so frustrating and that is why I regret buying it. Next is this Makeup Forever Concealer Palette. I've had this for years. I have tried to make it work multiple times as you can see. A lot of the colors have been dug through and have been scraped and have tried to use them but this concealer is a very very dry concealer and anytime I apply it either on the face to conceal or underneath the eyes it just looks really cakey and dry and doesn't blend out very well it's just not my favorite concealer formula which is why I do regret buying this palette and I find that the packaging is also really cheap Especially since it's Makeup Forever, I feel like it should have been a little bit more higher end and this is not a cheap concealer palette, it's just like this plastic case and I don't know. I just don't like this product and um, yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say about it. Okay, so I feel like I'm gonna be crucified for talking about this and saying that I regret buying it, but it is true. This is the Naked 3 palette. Don't kill me! Honestly, I love the Naked 1 palette, I love the Naked 2 palette. When the Naked 3 palette came out, I was so excited because it was another Naked palette. And obviously, it's all very exciting things when new Naked palettes come out. So I bought it, but I honestly, I never, ever, ever use this palette. I find a lot of these colors in here are very similar to each other. Like, I feel like, like these two. They look exactly the same, they're just literally a half a shade darker and some of them are really chunky and not like as smooth as I would like them to be. I find that the colors just are not different enough, like they all just look the same to me. They're too soft, like I want more of a variety in a palette. I think that's the reason why 
I just don't reach for it as much. Okay, another palette that I do regret buying is the Smashbox Full Exposure Palette. Now, I was really excited when I bought this because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mattes and then seven shimmers right on top, but I have literally never touched this palette. So it's not saying that the formula isn't bad, I just feel like I have other palettes that I reach for more that have the exact same colors. There's just nothing about this palette that I find to be exceptionally mind-blowing. Like I said, I could find basically all these colors in other palettes that I just reach for a little bit more. I think it's a good neutral palette, but I do have other neutral palettes that I like a lot more. So for those reasons, I do regret buying it. Another Smashbox product, this is the Smashbox LA Lights Blendable Lip and Cheek Color in the color Hollywood and Highlight. I bought this completely on a whim. I did not hear anybody talk about this. I just swatched it on my hand in the store and I was like, yes, a highlighter, I gotta get this. Now, the thing about this product is that it is really pretty when you swatch it on your hand. It's like this really pretty highlight shade. It's right over here, but there's something about this that just does not stay on the skin. It just like completely dissipates throughout the day and it's like you're left with nothing else on your skin. And I have other cream highlighters that I just like way more and that actually do last on my skin. Like I find this sort of feels a little greasy and it never really sets, which is the problem that I have with it. So I just regret buying it. I never ever use it. And I now I know that I should do my research a little bit more before buying products that I've never heard about because it's a risk. It's definitely a risk. I have another Smashbox product to talk about, unfortunately. I do really like Smashbox. It's just for some reason, these three products seem to have made it in here. Okay, this is the Smashbox um, Be Legendary Longwear Lip Lacquer in the color Beat It. Okay, this color is so beautiful. When I saw this in the store, I was very excited because I just absolutely adore this type of like rich berry color. As you can see, I'm actually wearing it, something like that, on the lips. When you hear of something that's called a lip lacquer, like you would think that it would be like very opaque, very glossy, like just like more of like a thick, um, consistency like it's a lacquer you know Th that's just what comes to my head when I think of them so that's what I expected when I bought this but this is a lip gloss like it is just a lip gloss there's nothing wrong with the product it's just my expectations were here and they were met right about here you can see like when I swatch it it's just a very very sheer gloss and it's a pretty gloss don't get me wrong it's just this isn't a lip lacquer like I don't think you can consider this a lip lacquer in my opinion anyway you may think differently but that's just what I think and I was just really disappointed about this product because I want it to be like bam in your face like okay so the last product that I regret buying is one from Benefit this is one of their creaseless cream eyeshadows in Always a Bridesmaid. So this is what the product looks like. It's just a really pretty, almost iridescent, dusty lilac color. But the problem I have with this product is that it is not, again, an opaque product. It is very, very sheer and it's extremely dry. This is actually completely dried out. Look, it's so dry that I just cracked it trying to swatch it. And this is not old, like, at all. I don't know if this is a defect or what, but... I, it just really did not work out for me as you just saw that was like a live demonstration basically Doesn't work out. There are a lot of other cream eyeshadows that I like a lot more like the Maybelline ones the Mac ones So this one didn't do it for me. So that's it for all the products that I regret buying Let me know in the comments down below one product that you regret buying because that is something that I definitely would like to hear. And do not forget to enter the giveaway, of course. All the links will be in the description box down below. Give this video a nice big thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!